let's welcome the governor of the state of Michigan to the program this morning, Rick Snyder. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Happy holidays. Happy it's holidays to you. Yeah. Battle Creek's governor, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm proud of that. Actually, I'm looking forward to uh, coming back to visit. They've got a great event this weekend at uh, Lake Dew High um, for uh, the first tech program, which is about um, helping young people get interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, the skilled trades, all those great fields. So I'm looking forward to visiting town. Well, that's exciting because we've been hearing that uh, there's plenty of jobs in those areas and not enough folks to fill them. There are. There's a lot of great opportunity, and that's a top priority. I mean, one of the things I'm pleased with over the last year and over the last few years is how we've done on job creation. Um, we're number five in the nation for private sector jobs being created, 420,000, number one in manufacturing jobs. But we still have people out there looking for opportunities. And one of the great opportunity places is the skilled trades and career tech education. Um, so that's something we really need to emphasize. And we've got a lot of good things in the pipeline to uh, have more opportunities and get parents and young people to look at these as great career opportunities. One of the other job-related announcements around Battle Creek recently was the uh, the information regarding cybersecurity in Battle Creek. Was this a big hurdle to clear? Uh, this was very exciting. It's something we'd worked on for some time in terms of uh, the Air National Guard having an opportunity to uh, help lead the nation. Um, this was one of the, the first rounds of really cyber squadrons being created. Um, and so it's exciting to see us participate in that. Um, Michigan's been a leader in cybersecurity, and Battle Creek has been a leading location in that um, for the last several years. So this just reinforces something that um, the community should be proud of in terms of a leadership position. Um, this strengthens, solidifies it more, and uh, hopefully we'll gather more attention to how important this issue is and how great people we have in our community that can do this wonderful work that mm -hmm. keep us safe. Well, as you look back uh, on the year, we had our challenges, didn't we? Uh, certainly with trying to figure out the road funding situation. As you look back on that, how do you feel about it today? Well, it was a, it was a great accomplishment to get done. It took longer than I would have liked. Um, obviously, there are compromises on a major piece of legislation like that. Um, but that's been the history. This usually only comes up about every 10, 15 years and takes several years to get done. Um, and we got it done. And this is actually the largest um, investment of new resources in our transportation system in over half a century. So it's something to move us forward in a positive way. Um, we're going to improve warranty practices, competitive bidding, um, deal with some of the long-term cost structure issues. Um, so this is a good step forward. So I appreciate the, the hard work of the legislature to get this done. Let's talk about the uh, the Syrian refugee situation for a moment. There was a handful of governors, you included, who said, wait a minute, we have to re-examine this situation. Uh, talk about why you felt that way. Well, actually, there, there was the majority of governors by far had a concern over this issue. And what I would say is, is I thought it appropriate, given what happened in Paris, what happened in Lebanon with the bombing, the Egyptian airliner, um, not to challenge what the federal government is doing per se, but to just ask the question, um, are we keeping up to date with what's going on, and can you share your practices on how we're making sure that we're, you know, balancing the, the, the spirit of America, which is to be a very welcoming place um, with the need to make sure we're also doing good national security and keeping the, the, the bad people out as part of this process. And so that's really led to, uh, I think, a healthy dialogue with the federal government. I've had multiple conversations with the Secretary of Homeland Security. We've exchanged letters. Um, we've had a broad dialogue with the governors now and the federal government to say, let's be more transparent and open about the, the review processes and how to make sure that we're doing it the right way uh, so we can continue to be that welcoming place. You know, everything these days turns political. Uh, the opponents to that approach have said, hey, you know, we have a we have a national policy in place. It works fine. Why do we need to talk about that? Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, again, I would say it's gotten overly politicized on both ends of the political spectrum because, again, it should be about politics. Um, it's about saying, do we, do we as a general public have a good understanding of this process? Do we feel comfortable? And can once we do, then let's make sure we are being an opening place, uh, open and welcoming place, and move forward with this. And so the good part is, is that analysis is taking place in a more open fashion. Um, and we're getting a better understanding about how we can all collaborate and cooperate. Because, again, one of the things that made America great is our attitude towards immigration, about bringing people to this country, and we should be proud. We've got the largest Middle Eastern population in the country here in the metro Detroit area. Um, mm -hmm. So 
let's strike that right balance and not make it about politics. One of the other stories making news right now, Governor, is, is uh, the potential data center in the Grand Rapids area. And this company that at least it, the way the, the stories have been reported is saying, give us some tax breaks and we'll come. What's your thought on that? Well, the, the, there is some legislation that's passed that I'll be reviewing as it comes to my desk. And the, some of the questions out there is, um, is it for more than one company? To say, as an industry, is there an opportunity to encourage more of the data center industry in Michigan? Um, what are the financial implications of that? Because, again, being fiscally responsible is something that I view as critically important to make sure we run our government well and right. Um, and then is it good tax policy in terms of looking at an exemption for this particular industry versus other industries? Um, so these are all good, thoughtful questions that need to be part of the analysis. I think the legislature um, has done a lot of good work addressing a number of those, but I want to review that. So this is the normal legislative process, and it could be an opportunity to see more jobs um, grow in Michigan from both people already here and people that could be coming here. I think generally, though, your administration has has not been in favor of broad tax breaks, though, in situations like this. Is that fair to say? Yeah, what I'd say is I don't like tax credits in particular. This is more an exemption for a broader class, I um, but I don't like tax credits. That's something I'm very clear about. Um, and we've moved away from that, and we're still dealing with some of the legacy issues from the past. But mm -hmm. we'll get through that. Uh, and, again, it's about how do we create a good job creation environment at the same time being fiscally responsible and fair and simple for the general public to understand what is good tax policy. Well, another thing going on right now is this whole uh, potential elimination of the straight party ticket option on the Michigan ballot. And it, I guess it's fair to say we'll see some sort of hammering out between the House and Senate versions. How do you feel about this? Well, that's something, again, I'll review. I, I tend not to take comments or comment on hypotheticals until they arrive at my desk because, uh, again, thoughtful reviews take place and they make amendments quite often up to the end. Um, but in terms of straight ticket voting, I mean, uh, we're the, in the minority of states that actually allow that. Um, so it is something from a policy point of view that you can have a good discussion about. I think a number of county clerks and clerks are concerned about what it could do um, to wait times and the ability to people have people vote in a you know, prompt fashion, but a thoughtful fashion. So there's a balance to be struck there. Yeah, it seems like it's a reasonable thought, although our Calhoun County clerk just wishes she could have lines like they do at Best Buy on Black Friday. <laughs> 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 All right. And as far as the year goes, uh, this Flint water situation that made so many headlines, uh, do you feel that that's corrected itself and, and we're in good good shape there? Well, we've made a lot of progress, but it's a serious issue. So I would say uh, we're going to con continue to be very diligent about working with people, uh, particularly in Flint. Uh, to make sure that they're getting their water tested. They've got opportunities to get free filters. Um, they can get blood testing. And if we find issues with blood levels, that there's appropriate follow-up to help people um, because we want to try to get this issue uh, under control and move forward uh, with good recommendations about how to address it, make sure it doesn't happen other places in our state, and minimize the impact in Flint. All right. Well, welcome back to Lakeview and Battle Creek. Well, I always look forward to that. So happy holidays to you and your listeners. And, uh, yeah, Michigan continues its comeback. We're going to stay on the gas and keep moving forward. All right. Check in anytime you like. Thank you. All right. Governor Rick Snyder on WBCK.